going to do a very short talk. I uh, hadn't planned to, but unfortunately Fiona McElroy, who is our host from the University of Ulster, was taken a little ill, so she wasn't able to travel. So I'm really just going to welcome you all. Um, we have four speakers and then we have a little break and we'll have teas, coffees and food at that little break. And then after that, we'll have a few more speakers and we should be wrapping up at around half past four or five o'clock. It depends on how long people speak for. But hopefully we'll all follow format. We have a 10 minute uh, kind of limit on our format. So to start off, I'm just going to give a very brief whistle stop tour uh, as what I consider the top 10 tips for people who are running their own business in the design and innovation business. So obviously this is one of my favorite uh, kind of Tom Waits type characters uh, doing the impossible because he believes he can. I think this is kind of the message of Humble Exchange is that we believe that things are possible no matter how grumpy or how uh, grungy the rest of the world behaves. I think there's opportunities everywhere. They're like scattered coins and we just need to see them and pick them up. On our Facebook page, this poster went really viral really quickly and I think it really hit a chord. Basically, this is a quotation from Ira Glass who made the point that when you're a designer and you're starting out in business, um, you find the most frustrating thing that you could possibly uh, have ever imagined happens. That is that you have kick-ass taste, your taste is killer, but somehow there's a bit of a gap between what you imagine you want to achieve and what you can achieve. An awful lot of the time, the reason for not being able to meet your taste requirements are because you have limitations built into your soul traderism. <laughs> you're a one-man band, you're on your own, you're trying to do things your own, your own way. But a lot of it is also to do with confidence. And what we're kind of all about is saying, you know, mind the gap, but really don't mind the gap, you know, because as you, as you progress, you get better and you just have to keep on doing it. And you do it more often and you get closer. The big thing you just have to watch out for is the opposite happening, that your taste starts to, you know, deteriorate because you settle and hopefully we won't have any of that. The second point I want to make is uh, follow the lines. This is about finding opportunity. What is opportunity and where is it? It's a very, very well-known fact among entrepreneurs that if you see a queue, you have seen a need. And as soon as you see a need, you have a gap in the market. And once you have a gap in the market, you have an opportunity to step in there and make money. Following the lines is actually quite a complicated path for people in the service industry because lines don't really queue up. You're actually trying to anticipate what people need. But actually, this is the formula for success. If you can try to anticipate what people's needs are and introduce them to their needs, just like Steve Jobs says or Henry Ford says, you know, if I asked people what they wanted, they'd say faster horses. But you kind of bring people along with you and you show them the way. And the uh, design might be invisible, but it's there to be seen if you look for it. Be nice. This is a very core concept in Fumble Exchange. Being nice means following our primary school rules, <laughs> which is our code of conduct. Uh, being nice, you don't actually have to be nice if you don't want to, if you don't want to but we, we kind of have the, the left-hand image for people who'd rather not be nice that they say nothing at all. Um, but it just makes for a happier, a happier uh, uh, relationship with your fellow people. And don't delude yourself. I mean, this is a nicer way of kind of dealing with the point of fail early, fail often. Always be aware of how your progress is going, what is working for you, what line you're on, and how to adapt from what you're doing that you thought was going to be the appropriate response and what is actually the response. This is a funny one because self-delusion is the first step of ambition. An awful lot of people have to be pretty deluded to embark on a journey in the first place. but. Then you get to step two where you're in that nice little warm, fuzzy, self-deluded place and then you get into, you know, contrary to all reason, you continue to believe what is wrong. So you've got to kind of keep track of yourself that way. Obviously this is no uh, entrepreneurial presentation can be uh, made without, you know, dealing with this point. You know, cash flow is king, um, don't forget your VAT returns, always try and stay ahead of the, the money man and don't dry up. Um, fuel is 
all sorts of things. It's energy, it's passion, it's conviction. But in my opinion, that's the most important thing in the fuel bank. Don't dry up, but don't lose your track of cash. Um, and then, I suppose, in our profession, keeping it simple and making it beautiful. Uh, a lot of people get very quickly to the point that by keeping things simple, they can keep costs down. But you should never stop trying to make something beautiful. One of our um, design dialogue speakers last year uh, at our uh, sister event in Belfast came up with a magic formula, and it was creativity multiplied by ideas multiplied by execution equals happiness. And if you have any one of those things missing at anything you ever do, whether you're a child doing Play-Doh or whether you're an adult trying to design a spreadsheet, if you have something missing in that formula, you're not going to be happy. So, I mean, I think keeping an eye on making things beautiful. Plus, it's been very much uh, well proven in all kind of company uh, business literature these days that design is a key differentiator and it makes a huge difference. Don't accumulate. Um, in Fumble Exchange, we all have one desk and we have one store and really that's all we get. And I think that it's a very, very good lesson from living lightly that we don't store up banks of uh, our, our history and our project past. Things, obviously, the world is making this a much easier thing to do now with cloud technology and all sorts of other things. But part of accumulating is actually feeding an ego. You know, you're actually trying to uh, build a repository that you can look at of, didn't I do well? If you just let everything go, you'll always be trying to do something better, and I think it's a great philosophy. Um, keep up. Um, keeping current is one of the hardest things to do. You start a business at a particular point in time, you're very current, you're working with the system that's there, you're keeping up with the changing technologies, and then you bed in. As soon as you bed in, you're old. You've got to keep testing yourself and you've got to keep proving yourself. Compromise carefully. I don't think compromise is a bad word, but I think if you're hanging around with people that make you compromise all the time, that's when you change the people you change your environment because you should not have to take what's important to you and again and again and again change it to accommodate somebody else. I know an awful lot of people in Fumble Exchange have had to take that decision uh, and not take it lightly and actually make a real difference in their lives and I really applaud those people. Integrity is obviously core to compromise. You need to know what is true for you before you can understand whether you're compromising it or not. And number 10 is live lightly. Now, I've kind of already dealt with that a little bit, but that was more about kind of accumulating possessions. This is more about not taking yourself seriously, always having a sense of humor, always being ready for a smile. And finally, this one's for me. Stay well. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>